Hi, Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we are revisiting the uh, Trebo text video because, like a fucking idiot, I fluffed it up. Now I'm going to put an, uh, a time index in the video here somewhere, wherever. Uh, if you want to just skip to that point and skip the bit where I talk about where I fucked up and so on, you don't want the explanation and all that shit, and get to the rest of the meat of this video. Just skip to that bit, and I won't. You know, not going to hold anything against you. Right, so, um, I put the video up, and because uh, my excuses, what are my excuses, um, you know, I have a shitload to do, it's not just one project, it's RG500s, it's SVs, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's materials, I'm all over the place, and now and then, just like a human being, I fuck up. And where did I fuck up? I misread the data sheet, the technical data sheet, um, it said... 1 gram per litre, 50 grams per litre, and 750 grams per litre, or something like that. Uh, those bigger numbers don't really matter. And then what it did is it was going down saying it's this, that, and the other. And I even highlighted the bit, but just failed to read it, because sometimes... <laughs> it's not a real excuse, I'm just a dickhead. Um, sometimes what happens is, you know, when you get your mind focused on something... So the story is that I uh, bought this stuff ages ago, back in October. Um, and I did some preliminary sketches in, I've got a notebook, and I did some sketches and stuff and wrote a few things. Just a couple of notes. Put it in the book, which is where I wrote the notes for the decibel, um, the mileage of the SV, stuff like that. Then what happens is, is uh, you know, race forward until like two weeks ago. I then pick up them notes, and I misunderstood my own notes because it was really just a couple of numbers, you know what I mean? I just did a couple of doodles. And... Um, so I, I misread, you know when you, you, you focused on something, you misread something. That is the beauty of YouTube, you know, a lot of you guys said, hang about, you fucked up, you've misread what it says on the data sheet. Um, yes, I have, totally my fault and all the rest of it. And based on that, I was saying that it was one gram per um, thousand cc or per litre. And that dilution gives you a really fuck all dilution. And people said, hang about, no, no, you've just read the sheet. The sheet is a bit weird because that's generally not the way that sheets usually are. Some are, some aren't. But anyway, that's my excuse. I basically got my teeth stuck into this concept that there wasn't enough of it. All I remember from doing my notes was, this doesn't add up, there's not enough of it. Dripping with autism. So the issue with the whole thing is, is this whole dilution thing that I was talking about. Now on the data sheet, it does say one gram per 21 millilitres, which if you divide that out, that gives you uh, one, I'll well, get rid of that bit. It gives you one to 42 dilution, or if you go one gram to 24 millilitres, it's a 24 millilitre syringe, and you can buy 20 millilitre syringes, uh, but this gives you uh, 51 which that's a lot closer to the 50 to 1 they were saying than the 42, it's a bit far off there, you know what I mean? Um, so I would say that this stuff is the 21 grams to what is it, just because that gives you the 50 to 1, which is what they state on their date sheet. It also has a passage saying we're not going to give away the exact amount, that's a trade secret and all that shite. So I basically owe Trebotex an apology, hang about. There was something that was niggling at me. <laughs> and the big thing niggling at me was my first impression when just looking at the numbers months and months ago in October was, this is fucking miles off. So we're going to stick with this dilution. We're going to read the data sheet correctly. <laughs> but there was one other mistake I made, and that was this. Basically did the SV cylinder. So I took a worn out cylinder from their specs. So they said if it's... Um, 15 microns out of round. So I made an oval that was uh, 98 millimeters in diameter, but there was 15, 000, uh, 15 microns bigger um, in diameter. That mistake there is, again, I've highlighted both again, and I didn't see. What I did was, basically, when people said, you've got your data sheet wrong, I sat down with a notepad, I went through my entire video, and I, I redid the maths that I did in the video, and then I redid just starting afresh, forgetting everything that I'd said, 
and compared the two and they didn't match up and I was like, what the fuck have I done wrong here? What I've done wrong, the second big mistake, there was a silly mistake about um, cubic centimetres and volume and, you know, there's all these fucking numbers and I fuck up all the time. Um, but basically what happens is the second big mistake I made was the wear of the cylinder. What I did was, is it says 98 millimetres and then it says 98.0... Was it zero zero five or something like oh zero zero one? That was the range of what size the cylinders can be new. Um, I didn't actually. I said it was a service limit. It's because I'm skim reading and going really fast. But what I did is I actually underquoted the SV wear. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, go through the whole thing with these new numbers. Well, that's just fucking great. Oh, great! You know what that is? Do you know what that is? Great. That's just fucking great! Right, so we have a 98mm ball. This is brand new. So this is new from the factory. Right, let's just say it's perfect. Then what happens is, is over time, as your engine wears, let's just say this is the, this is the front position, your forward position of your cylinder, that's towards your exhaust, towards your front wheel. Your cylinder will overlight this, right? And then Suzuki actually have a wear limit. That wear limit is this one. So they're basically saying 50 microns of wear across the entire bore, not 50 microns here. It's basically 25 microns here and 25 microns here. Right, so what we do is in SolidWorks is that I got, um, made an oval that was 98 millimetres across here, the size of your bore, and then um, uh, 90, 90.05 millimetres here. That's what I basically made an oval, that shape. And then I subtracted this bit, I put another cylinder in it and cut it away. Right, so what we're left with is this very thin crescent on both sides and that is the wear that is what tree botex has to replace when we do the numbers for that or when solidworks does the numbers for that because finding oval areas and then volumes is fucking hard <laughs> i cheat and use solidworks just because i want to be confident about the numbers the numbers that come back is that the wear volume equals 441.26 millimeters cubed now it's millimeters cubed because it's fuck all um so when we look at this what's the dilution of this well it's 50 to 1 we worked out in the last video that the um volume of nano magic at one gram for this, that you know, one gram, um, no, just one gram. If it's carbon, it equals uh, 470 millimeters cubed. So, if this is carbon, it has a so the carbon nanotubes or whatever funky graphene uh, sheets or whatever, it'd be 470 millimeters cubed. So, as you can see straight away, this tree botex stuff will repair one cylinder. Well, that's no good because I have two. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is the wear of the cylinder, of one cylinder. This is what Trebotex has in it for that syringe at this dilution, at this 50 to 1, 1 gram in 24 millilitres. It's, it'll do one cylinder, but I've got two cylinders. And it's not just two cylinders, it's bearings. I've got bearings and so on. Then the other thing that I didn't get to which is the really important bit, so we'll leave all of that up. I then did some more numbers. This stuff, this vial, and that chill video, it fucking is a chill video. Um, he's put it in a six litre, uh, uh, um, looks like a three litre about there, straight six BMW engine. Well, it's got a oh, shitload more cylinders. Um, and... The other problem is, is it's the same size syringe, but there's one thing that they haven't thought of, or just there is, there's no distinction. I looked on the Trebotex thing, they have a diesel one, and they have just the normal red one for gasoline and all that shit. There's one thing that they didn't think about, and that's fucking these fuckers, right? This 
is a clutch friction plate. Right, this is for the SV, these are e, yeah, EBC, uh, CK series, what have you. Any road, what I did is I went on SolidWorks. It's not these that we need to worry about, it's actually that I've just got this as an example. I measured this, so I measured the inside and the outside diameter and all the rest of it. And it's the steel plates, or what the um, Suzuki call the drive plates, for your clutch. I did a SolidWorks thing of that. I only took the contact rim that these friction plates rub against. And on each face, there is 4,803.5, uh, 4, we'll put 0.5, uh, centimetres squared, uh, millimetres squared, that's the surface of the face. There's two faces per every single disc, um, and just say it's 100 microns of wear, right? Just say we have 100 microns of wear per face. If you add all that up, so you get your um, this, and you times it by this, you get um, uh, 408. Well, that's another fucking vial of um, Trebotex per plate. Per fucking plate. And then you've got to times that by two, because there's two sides to each face. So basically, that's the area, uh, that's the volume of wear on your driven plates or your steel plates per face. So that face and then obviously on the reverse of the other face. So you've got to times it by two and then you've got to times it by nine because there's nine of the, well, there's actually 10 of these, but uh, there's nine plates. And I'll show you a picture off the fucking what is it and I'll put some numbers on it just so you can see um, from the parts manual from Suzuki. So there's nine plates all together, right? That equals 8,645. 0.5, 0 0.49 uh, millimetres cubed. Now let's just say we got half that wear, just say it's not even that, that's still 4,000. So if we put clutch steel plates, right, that equals 4,322.95 millimetres cubed. That's at 50% wear, that's, no, that's at 50 microns. 50 microns inclusive, so both sides. Inclusive. Right. Then there's your clutch basket. All the prongs all the way around. You can see them wear marks in. Surface area, that again, we've got 200. And with, with 10, uh, 100 microns of wear, that's 235. Now, 100 microns is two thicknesses of a human hair, so it's fuck all. Um, 0.2 millimetres cubed. So altogether, that's 5.4 cc. When you add it all together, it's 5.4 cc. All right? This is what I was getting at. <laughs> the numbers were... I read the sheet wrong, but I also read the fucking Suzuki manual wrong, because I'm been a dick. But we talk, we've got 470. This is what we've got here. We've got 470 here. And we've got 440 for, per cylinder. So we've got a double that, so that's 880. We've got the steel plates. See, the difference between a car and a bike is that in bikes you have wet clutches. And they say this stuff basically repairs surfaces where high pressures and oil goes. Oil goes into your wet clutch. That is high pressure, then fucking springs are pressing against it. It's so high pressure, it can engage your engine to your transmission and to your rear wheel. Your fucking rear tyre usually lets go before your clutch does in most cases. So there's an awful lot of pressure there. You can measure the pressure because you measure the springs. Um, it's bullshit. I'm sorry, but it's just fucking rubbish, right? You can check over these numbers if you want and what have you. Please do, because if I fuck something up, that'd be absolutely great. Um... It's just fucking rubbish. Just fucking rubbish. Not for bikes. Even for cars. This is per cylinder. You know, this number here is per cylinder. That guy has a straight six. There's six cylinders in there, not fucking two. You know, it's a three litre engine, so the balls and all the rest of it. We're not talking about tappets. We're not talking about buckets. We're not talking about valve guides. We're not talking about camshafts, main bearings, rod bearings, journal bearings, gudgeon pins, wrist pins. Um, small ends, big ends, we're not talking about fucking anything here, we're not talking about gears, we're not talking about shafts, we're not talking about the ball bearings in your races, we're not talking about plane bearings, it's 
fucking rubbish. This is why I said before there's about a metre fucking squared in the first video. I said there's about a metre squared in your engine. That's a massive guess, but I probably want not far off. That's the entire coverage surface area. But when we actually look at wear regions, a wet clutch, you know, your discs will wear out. Um, your friction pads do wear out. You know, there isn't, these wear out quicker than your um, steel plates. Of course they do. You know, this, this is the replaceable part. But they still wear and there is still pressure. So Trebotex is going to try and sort that out. It's going to try and fix that. You've got oil, you've got pressure, and you've got um, material being worn away. So there's wear. It's just complete fucking nonsense. One vial that I got that I put in the SV won't repair one cylinder. It'll repair a cylinder by 50%. Which you might think that's great. You know, 50% wear on your cylinder. But you've got to remember that Trebotex works with an oil film and pressure. So basically what's happening is it's your piston ring. And the sides of your piston when they scuff. That is the only thing that's creating that pressure. And there's fuck all oil there in the first place. You know, that's the whole point, is the wiper ring takes most of it away. So, does that mean that it, you know, does that mean that, all right, it kind of leaves your cylinders alone but repairs everything else? In a bike engine, it's repairing your fucking clutch because they're some of the highest pressures and some of the biggest contact surface areas. It's repairing your clutch. Well, fucking whoopee do. You just go and buy, and you know, you buy another clutch. I can't remember what this clutch kit cost me. Even if you go and get the steel plates as a set, you're talking about a hundred quid. So, about a hundred quid, or Trebotex will kind of repair. No, it just doesn't fucking work. It's complete nonsense. It works in a lab under test conditions if you use loads of this shit. It even says for heavy industry they use a lot higher concentrations. The concentration is wrong. So. What they're doing is they're selling a product, which is this one gram per four, four, uh, 24 millilitres. It's fucking rubbish. It's garbage. Now, I know a lot of you aren't surprised that it's garbage, but you've got to remember that there are people pushing this. This is the problem. Trying to take people's money. This is what I fucking can't stand. If it's the Scott Euler wankers, if it's the Evans fucking cunts, it doesn't matter. There's always these fucking assholes who are using bad science. It's science, it works in the application, but in reality it's fucking rubbish. And it just fucking winds me up. Because a hundred quid, you know, or a hundred dollars, is not cheap. You could spend that on actually doing something like buying a new clutch kit. You know, and I get videos, uh, not videos, I get emails and Facebook messages all the time saying, Matt, what about this? What about this? I'm not going to blanket say, I'm not going to blanket and say everything's shit. That's a bad way to think. If everything is shit, even though I haven't looked at it, um, you know what I mean? That There could be some nuggets in there. There are some good stuff. Autosol for getting off, you know, for polishing chrome and stuff. Fucking excellent stuff. It's been around forever. You know, uh, ACF, XCP. I didn't particularly like this XCP stuff. Um, you know, I thought, oh, here we go. ACF's been around for a long time. These are the new boys who are... But it fucking... It's sticky, but it bloody works. You know what I mean? And, you know, you shouldn't just blank it and say any kind of oil additives, any kind of whatever is nonsense. We do have to test them, though. And this has gone in the SV. Now, I didn't do any power tests, but these people claiming better compression, more miles per gallon, they're talking like three or four miles per gallon more. Now, you might say, now, nah, what's three or four miles per gallon? Well, that's actually quite a lot. You know what I mean? Because if you have a, 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 you know, a bike that does 50 miles per gallon or 60 miles per gallon, then all you've done is pour this shit in. It's going to save you a lot of money. It's better from the pandas and all the rest of it. But it actually means that something actually is going on inside. And a more efficient engine is usually a better running engine. It's usually, um, you know, your engine's going to last longer if it's, if it's more efficient, generally speaking. That's a bit of a loose term. But the fact of the matter is, is that these charlatan bastards are using, you know, one form of science, a scientific method or study, and then basically capitalising on that. Now, it happens a lot of the time. But what it annoys me about is it also annoys me that um, what could you do better for your engine? Keep that fucking hundred quid and just buy an extra bottle of oil. You know what I mean? Um, go and treat your bike to a bit better oil or go and treat your bike to something. Don't 
fucking waste your money on this rubbish. Oh. We're going to do one more video on this, which is going to be just a piss take video about the sound and so on and so on, which would be quite good. But yeah, you know, you look at my numbers, you can do it yourself if you really want to. Um, yes, I did fuck up before, you know, fucking human. It doesn't change the fact that numbers were wrong and that was not proof. Uh, this is, you know what I mean? I've got the dilutions right, it's higher, it's in their favour. But I also fucked up the cylinder wear. Um, you know, your cylinders probably aren't at the service limit. And your clutch probably isn't this worn out. But like I say, we haven't added up all the other things. Like bearings, tappets, valves, valve guides and all the rest of it. We are fucking miles off. You know, we are... Just for your clutch steel plates, we're an order of magnitude out, which is t ten times. And that's not including the cylinders. This is not adding all of this up. When you add all this up, you're getting into like... I imagine for a bike that's 50,000 miles, you'd be talking about five, uh, you'd be talking about 5,000. 5,000 cubic millimetres for a bike that's done 50,000 miles. I imagine, just looking at these numbers and having a big quick guess about it, this is an order of magnitude off that. It's fucking nowhere near. But they're still gonna take you a fucking 100 quid. And they're still doing these shield videos and they're tr still trying to con um, confuse people. That's the problem is it's confusing people. There are so many products out there, and they all claim they've got whatever. Trust me, if Trebotex was the balls and actually did work, Castrol, Mortal, Repsol, Elf, someone would have fucking bought that. You know what I mean? They would have bought them out. They would have said, yes, you've got the patent. You, you dude particularly, you've got the patent. Do you want to come and work for us? We'll give you shitloads of money. Just fucking nonsense. The fact of the matter is... Is that these particles probably cost quite a bit to manufacture to make sure the alloy and the grain and all the rest of it is what it is meant to be if it's just fucking graphite then they're charging you a hundred quid for powdered graphite which is fucking robbing you you know what i mean powdered graphite for bearings costs three quid you know what i mean and that oil the, all the rest of it the suspension i actually found what one of the cast numbers was it's fucking be what beeswax so they're putting beeswax in it uh, I'm not entirely sure why they're putting beeswax in it. Maybe it's the beeswax that's actually basically reducing the friction slightly. Who fucking knows? Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.